Hi Robert, how are you? I'm really excited about the opportunity to be a part of Caremore. I wanted to give you a little sample of what I do. I hope you enjoy. Thank you again for the opportunity and let me know if you have any concerns or questions. Have a great one. Bye-bye. If you divide the time administered by the time and hours, you will get the amount of cc's per hour that you will put into the pump and then you will administer to the client. If you do that formula, will you cause the patient to have fluid overload? No. No. Therefore, we have stopped the problem, right? We prevented this issue, okay? Now, the second formula that we're going to look at is this one. It has the total volume administered over the total time in minutes. The other one is the total time in hours. We now have to change the hours into minutes. But, just to remember, you guys notice that on here, we have the total time in minutes, plus we have a drop factor. Your orientation and your neural check. Remember, your neural check is going to be your pupil size, your hand grips, and your, and your leg. Yes, per left. Okay. Okay, and then you're going to look at your integumentary system. With your integumentary system, guys, remember, we have to check for dehydration, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so how do we check for dehydration? Burger. Okay, where do we check our skin? Sternum. Sternum. The sternum. The <laughs> sternum. Yes. The sternum. Make sure you remember. remember that. Do not check on the back of the hand, okay? Always check on the sternum, okay? And how do I know if the person is dehydrated? So my total amount that's infused is what? 1,000. Total hours is what? Eight, eight hours. hours. If I divide 1,000 by 8, I would get what? 125 milliliters per hour. And then we would input this into the IV pump and then the person will infuse over eight hours. What happens if something happened and someone hit the pump and this infused over seven hours? What would happen to the client? What's your name? Rosa. Rosa, what would happen to the client? Fluid overload. Fluid overload. Just by, you did calculate it the correct way, but someone came in the room perhaps and started pushing buttons and they increased the rate. Now this person is going to have fluid overload. If they had fluid overload, we would need to be able to monitor them for signs and symptoms of that, right? Let's do one more problem so that we can find out how to use the other formula. If the doctor ordered D5.45 and he wanted 2,500 milliliters of fuse over a 24-hour period of time, and he used a drop chamber of 60 drops per minute, and he wanted this daily, for three days to treat edema, what would be the amount that needed to be infused? Who can tell me the amount that needed to be infused? <coughs> How about this lady here? What's your name? Lynette. Lynette. What's the amount that needs to be infused? 2,500 milliliters. 2,500 milliliters. Okay. What is the total time in hours that this needs to be infused in? What's your name? Myra. Myra. What's the total amount of hours that needs to be infused in? in 24 hours. Now guys, with this formula, do we need this in hours or do we need it in minutes? Minutes. How do we know for sure we need this in minutes? Because it has the what? Drop, drop, the drop, drop factor. And what's my drop factor? 60 drops per minute. So if I were to put the volume in as 2,500 milliliters, and then I want to put this in minutes, what is 24 hours in minutes? How would I get to that? Anybody? What's your name? Nancy. Nancy. How would I get the 24 hours and turn that into minutes? Multiply by 60. Multiply by 60. And why would I multiply by 60? Very good, because there's 60 minutes in an hour. So if I multiply 60 times 24, I would get 1,440 minutes. Then I would plug it into my equation. What is my drop factor? 60 drops, I will plug that into my equation. So now I divide 2,500 by 1,440. What would I get if I divided 2,500 into 1,440? Anybody? What's your name? Susanna. Susanna. What would I get? 1.7. 1.7. Then I would multiply 1.7 times 60. If I multiply 1.7 times 60, what would I get? Giselle. Yes. Um, 104. 104.4, 104.4, 104.4. Um, 
Make sure you also, besides your skin, you guys know that your skin includes your nails, your hair, right? So when you look at a person's skin, you're going to look at the nails. When you look at their nails, what are we looking for? On NCLEX is one big thing that they keep talking about, so that's with a C. No, something that you guys do on the weekend. Get your nails done. Clubbing. Clubbing. <laughs> What is clubbing? <laughs> Not like what you do circle, on the weekend. Right? Like like the clubbing circle? is when your finger is flat and round and fat. Why do we get clubbing? Smoking? God, it's not because of smoking, but it's because of hypoxia. Hypoxia. If we smoke, we can have hypoxia. If we're anemic, we can have hypoxia. If we are... Um, Malnourished, we can have hypoxia. Okay, after you reposition every two hours, what, what, you, what must you do? Notify the physician. Because isn't that an ulcer? The cubit is ulcer. It's stage one. So I need to get an order to put what we call a conform gauze on there, something that's really cushiony. So that if we put that on there and he lays on that, the cushion will take up the space and I won't have to have the skin break down and it won't go from stage one to what? Stage, stage two. two. You guys, that prevention stuff. You with me? So when you do that assessment, please make sure that you just don't look at the person and say, oh, they look good. You want to look at from the top of their head all the way to their feet. Oh, their skin. How about between their toes? Yeah. Yeah. How about under their breasts? Yeah. How about between their groin area? How about between their gluteal fold? How about if they have, if they're overweight, they have an apron. You know what an apron is? That's what Miss Armstrong has. <laughs> Lift up the belly. Look in the creases. Everywhere there's creases, there's a possibility of having an ulcer because you have skin touching skin. You guys with me? If the nails are fat and flat, because you guys know you have a curve to your nail, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. If they're flat and fat, that means they're clubbing. That means you have hypoxia. Hypoxia is different from hypoxemia, right? What's the difference between the two? Hypoxemia and hypoxia. What's the difference? Hypoxia. What's hypoxia? In the oxygen. Low oxygen where though? In the tissue. In the tissues. What's hypoxemia? In the blood. Very good. Low oxygen in the blood. So don't get those confused. Hypoxia, low oxygen in the tissue. Hypoxemia. No oxygen in the blood, okay? Also, we want to check the hair. What happens if the nail, the hair is brittle. breaking off and brittle? Hair problem. Not quite. Just means what? Or uh, malnutrition. That's right. It just means that there is less vitamins that's necessary. It could be malnutrition. It can be thyroid. But it has to do with the vitamins that we're lacking in those, okay? Yes? Okay. So, when we find this information about the integumentary system, you guys need to do subjective data and objective data. Remember the difference? Yes. What was my subjective stuff? What the, what, the patient patient says. Says. what the patient says. You notice how the patient says that, oh, uh, let's see, occupational hazards. So, what if I worked in a coal mine?